Hello, my name is Sean Finnegan, and I'll be your guide as we pop open the hood and examine the moving parts that are involved in bringing the Bible into the English language. I wonder, have you ever seen a Bible? Of course, everyone's seen a Bible, right? They're in movies, they're in our houses, they're in the church, they're in hotel rooms. But I bet the Bible that you've seen is an English Bible. And that's technically a translation of the Bible, not the actual Bible. As it turns out, the actual Bible for the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, and then in the New Testament was written in Greek. So unless you're seeing a Hebrew or a Greek Bible, then you're not actually seeing the real Bible. You're seeing a translation of the Bible. Now, the Hebrew Bible in a printed form or the Greek Bible in a printed form, these are actually reconstructions based on thousands of different manuscripts that have been discovered over the last couple of centuries mostly. And so what we want to do in this class is really take a deep dive to look at these different manuscripts. Where do they come from? How do you compare them to each other? For example, the Damascus Codex, a beautiful Old Testament manuscript where the hand of the scribe is so meticulous that it's almost indistinguishable from a printed manuscript. Or Codex Vaticanus, a famous manuscript for the New Testament, where once again the scribe, in this case writing in Greek letters, capital Greek letters with almost no spaces in between them, was able to line things up just so perfectly by eye and by hand. In this deep dive, you're going to learn all about where these manuscripts come from and how we can compare them to each other. And you're even going to find two passages that aren't represented in the oldest manuscripts yet that are still in many of our Bibles today. And then we'll get into the whole world of translation and how translators do their work, what philosophies they work from, and what are the main decisions that they make at the outset. And we're going to spend all kinds of time on bias in translation, a really important subject where translators unknowingly will insert their own beliefs into Scripture. And this is something that you need to be aware of when you go to pick your own Bible and consider different translations. So here are my four main objectives for this class. First of all, to find out where the Bible's manuscripts came from. Secondly, to learn about comparing manuscripts to arrive at the best text. Third, to understand how the process of translation works. And fourth, to develop a trained eye to spot bias in translation. Now the first two of these focus on manuscripts and the second two focus on translation. So what do you say? Will you join me in this journey of discovery? Will you join me as we explore the fascinating world of how we got our English Bibles, including transmission and translation? I hope you will.